Welcome to Cherry TV. It's a very special Cherry TV. Uh, very uh, lucky to be joined by Mr. Mick Malloy, a legend of uh, Australian comedy here. Thanks, I'll, Mick. I'll take legend, but yeah, yes. you're probably fluffing my pillows a bit there. Thank you. I'll fluff away. Cool. <laughs> Thanks for being here. Um, Can't wait. Yeah, just wondering, uh, may as well uh, have a bit of a chat about your films. Uh, you've done a couple in the past. I have done uh, two films that I've written and produced myself. Um, the first one was Cracker Jack, which is... Uh, my mum's favourite movie. Is it? Is. Movie. Set it. in the sleazy world world of lawn bowls. I, I say it's like a it's a film for the whole family unless you're over 70 then it's a bit of a date flick. So that's it. It was fun to do and uh, we had a ball. I actually had my first screen pash oh, really? in that film with Judith Lucy. Was that tongue? Well I can't kiss and tell but uh, yes there was. It was funny because Judith was a good friend of mine so we were both quite nervous about it so just so there was no tension beforehand the, the night before we slept together. No, that really helped, I thought. That is the way to do it. It was fantastic. And this is a true story. So we, we go to kiss and then uh, the, the director goes, action, and we pashed, and then they go, cut. And about eight crew members ran in and said, are you all right, Jude? Oh, oh. yeah, I took it personally. And the other film I made was a uh, film set in the music industry, of course, called uh, Boy Town, Excellent. about a boy band. And uh, the thing I remember most about that was to research the film, I had to go out and buy a whole heap of shit music, <laughs> shit music from DVDs. Shit videos. So I had to go, and I remember being at the counter of JB Hi-Fi with New Kids on the Block, Westlife, Backstreet Boys, and In Sync Five. Five, five yeah. got to run. And I just remember the guy at JB Hi-Fi at the counter looking at me, going, oh, "It's for research." So who was your favourite out of all those? I had a soft spot for Westlife, I, for, for parody reasons, of course, not that they get a high rotation. But I do remember one night I had all the boys around for, for a footy and I'd actually left the, all the DVDs out on my coffee table. And I could, stuff on the coffee table. It went very quiet and I had to go, no, 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 I'm writing a film. So that's how it went. Now, on the subject of film, and that's why I'm here, yes. is uh, to talk about your film. Murder Drome, which I've had the pleasure of seeing, and this is going to be a cult classic. Now, we're here for the DVD launch, yes. right? Which yep. is Sunday... The 9th of March. Sunday the 9th, and I want you to talk. Can I ask you a few questions about this film? What What's the genre? Describe the genre to everyone out there. The genre is uh, it's slasher, so it's, kind of, it's a definitely a slasher film, but it's actually the world's first actual roller derby slasher film. Everyone's on skates, the whole movie. Everyone's on skates. And, yeah, the whole thing's on skates. Uh, actual skaters, um, all roller derby chicks. Did you have to go to skating boot camp? Or? I didn't because I actually grew up playing roller hockey. I was mm. like this rad ass roller hockey player. <laughs> yeah, so. You're very good on skates. Yeah, so I'm on blades in it. So like blade skaters and quad skaters don't really get along. So that's why I'm actually the killer and I kill them. You play an so evil they bitch. They to die for skating on quads. You so, play an evil yeah. bitch with a violent streak. And I have to ask, was it a stretch for you? No. It looked like it came pretty naturally, to no, tell you the I, truth. At times I thought it was just like a documentary. <laughs> I was a bit confused, but um, it really seemed that way. Well, so. you're awesome. You're like a female Freddy Krueger star. I don't want to put, no, it, put you in a basket, but it's well worth a look, and it's right up uh, Cherry Bar's alley, I think. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a cult film full of great scenes. Not my memory of roller skating. I, my memory of roller skating was going to the Frankston roller skating rink and doing a couple of laps while they blasted out Uncanny X-Men. So oh, really? this is a bit of a step up in, in class, I have to say. Now tell me, talk, talk me through some of the characters' names, because it's all chicks. It's, I, have, I hesitate to call it a chick flick, because it doesn't fit that mode. But it kind of is chicky, and it's also, if you like seeing chicks get killed, it, it's a good one too. Well, I've, yeah. se I've seen it live. I've seen, I've seen it in my apartment, but not on film before, so I look forward to Who are the characters? Tell me the characters' okay, names, because the they're awesome. Like, okay, Cherry Sky, we've got... Uh, um, Sykes, got Sykes a bit crazy, um, we've got um, Daisy Mastermind, we've got like a few crazy ones. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Trans M, so yeah, they're kind of like real derby kind of names. My name's Mama Skate and um, I'm kind of like, uh, a, like Freddy Krueger, like in the 80s, like yes. I get killed and then I come back now, like yes. and I'm all burnt and all shit and like I come back for revenge and kill these derby girls and I've got like a, uh, that a old meat one. cleaver, that, uh, <laughs> typical. <laughs> A uh, meat cleaver attached to a chain, attached to a, a meat hook, and I swing it around and cut their heads off and, and gut them and, and all that and stuff. And did you so. get into character? Were you, were you while you are on set, were you walking well, around? Set, it's a documentary, that... so I was just yeah. like, just sit there, do your thing, but just wait until we're rolling. 
like rolling, getting now, the skates. And, you told um, me this yeah. took three years to make. Yeah, three years, because literally no budget. Everyone just, whenever anyone had time, people doing five rolls themselves. Um, just whenever we could uh, get away with filming at night, with no one calling the cops in the hall. <laughs> sunshine. So, three so, years. It's like yeah. uh, that's how long they took to make Apocalypse now. So yeah. you're in good company. Now you mentioned Geelong. There's, there's everyone thinks filmmaking's glamorous, but I noticed there's a lot of scenes at night. And I got the idea it was pretty cold. It was dead was, winter. I got pneumonia three times while making the film. It was like yeah. lie there in your PVC on the concrete while we're actually literally it was so cold they had to have like hair dryers and defrost the camera lenses. <laughs> so picture that wearing like PVC, lie on the ground in a pool of fake blood with chains and stuff all over you and just, just be cool about it. So I'm getting it excited cool just thinking about it. About it. Very, now very the coldest nice. shoot I ever had was I did Macbeth with Sam Worthington oh, awesome. and we had to shoot in the middle of the night, in the middle of winter at Macedon. And uh, you can Sam Worthington got shitty in New York the other day. You should have seen him on these night shoots. It was great. And tell me about the soundtrack too, because this is, I was wrapped This is a seriously, it's a, I don't want to say it's a cult film, but I don't want that to frighten anyone. But the soundtrack was awesome too. How did you find the bands for this? Well, it represents Melbourne and Australia so good because it's all local bands. Like we've got like the Mercy Kills, uh, Dark Shadows, um, uh, Hatchet Dawn, lots of bands, mm. you know, up and coming bands from Melbourne, Sydney. And actually Mercy Kills and the Dark Shadows are both going to be playing here on the 9th, Labor Day weekend. Uh, you can see the film. So this is sun going to be Sunday night and we're going to have it like, it's like the DVD launch, but we're treating it like a premiere. It's, it's a cherry bar premiere, we're going to have some red carpet out the front and these bands will be playing live. They're going to play live straight after. The film starts at 8 and it's literally a, a rock and roll uh, slasher piss up pretty much. So I can't wait. Yeah. There's going to be a night of nights. Now in researching this film you showed me another one called Bloodlust. Can we just talk about this one? <laughs> Can we talk about this one quickly? This was made in 1991 and the same genre, it's kind of, it's like yeah. a low budget cult style slasher film but some of the characters in it are quite awesome. Quite special and it uh, draws it back to Cherry once again because that was uh, re-released by Monster Films who were actually releasing Murder Drone. They also released like Human Centipede and stuff like that. And there was a, a brilliant, uh, well, they're starring our very own James Young and, a, and Max Core Daddy. If you want to see two corrupt cops together going berserk, uh, I have to draw your attention to this film. It's like two bad lieutenants. Uh, going off like firecrackers and the boys are good there's a certain chemistry there it's so good um, they get up the things they're a bit embarrassed about now so probably a bit of shame there a bit of uh, shock that you're bringing that up but, I enjoyed um, James Young uh, whipping, whipping a that, hooker that chick's ass. whipping a chick's ass it looked like uh, he'd done that a yeah. once or twice in his yeah. time for me smashing the hippies guitar <laughs> And haven't they let themselves go? I'd like to think they'd kept themselves tidy, but you're looking at two pretty good looking roosters and I look at them now and I go, I hope you've enjoyed the ride boys because you've clearly lived a life. Well, you know what also ties it back in, in one scene, when they actually uh, pull up in their car to chase that hippie down to steal his weed, I believe, because they, they want to get high themselves and yeah. their stashes run out, they actually pull in right out there in ACDC uh, lane. So way back then in 92, way before there was ACDC lane, either of them had anything to do with Cherry Bar. It's actually filmed rolling through this lane and that's where they run through, so it's a bit of a uh, bit of history there. And it's it all great. ties back to Sunday the 9th of March, Murder Drone, I, Monster Pictures. Here it is, Murder Drone, there you go, there's the DVD release. I have to encourage you as a student of Australian film to come and see this, because I believe it's a cult classic. And I know it's right up Cherry Bar's alley, and uh, it's going to be a great night. And can I congratulate you because you're you're quite awesome in this film. Thank you. And uh, will you be in costume on the night? Oh, I just might be, but once again, <laughs> just in my normal attire, black PVC cat suit. But um, pretty much, if you're a way that I could summarise the whole movie is uh, if you like rock and roll and stuff, there's that, but there's also skating. But it's pretty much picture a Nightmare on Elm Street meets Scooby Doo meets The Warriors meets. Away. That tired old genre. It's been done to death. Congratulations. I'm going to see you here on the Sunday night. I, I can't wait. This is, forget the AFIs, forget Wolf Creek 2. They are mucking around down the shallow end of the pool. This is uh, what it's all about. Congratulations. Thank you, Mick. And what's your next project coming up? Uh, I'm uh, making, I'm working on a film at the moment. It's, it's a very faithful remake of The Man from Snowy River. Oh, it's yeah. actually shot for shot, exactly the same, but with dwarves on Shetlands. Really? Yeah, I think it could be good. Wow, yes. Mum's gonna love it. <laughs> she will. Uh, I'll, I'll take her to the uh, opening.
well, maybe you could uh, do a bit of a filming of it here as well. Uh, I'm sure we'll be able to get a scene involved with Cherry Bar. Excellent. Well, looking forward to seeing you then on the night. Thanks, Bianca. Thank Can't you wait. Much for your time Pleasure. And, uh, good luck with it all in the future. Thank you.